Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video for the week. Today we're going to be looking at an Instagram reel, so it's going to be a short one today. On Twalk the Hulk 2 on Instagram. So I clearly saved this video for a reason. I can see his little thumbnail here it says alkaline food substitutes. So now I know what we're going to be talking about and I'm going to have to put him right where he's wrong, which is honestly throughout the entire video. So let's get started. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule Company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. Alkaline food substitutes to improve your health. Great. Okay, in order to improve your health, you need to eat the species appropriate, species specific diet for human beings, which is not consisting of any alkalinity in terms of the food that you're eating at all whatsoever. In fact, so false. Alkaline foods are typically the worst foods that you can eat. But let's let's go ahead and see what you have to say. Wild rice, kamu, quinoa. Okay, grains, wild rice. Those are, well, wild rice is a grain. Grains contain lots of lectins. They also contain phytates. Lectins utilize molecular mimicry on the domestic cells of the body in order to effectuate an immune response on said domestic cells, causally leading to perniciously, insidiously, glacially leading to autoimmune disorders. They're also a major cause of heart disease, in fact. So are oxalates, by the way, which grains, especially oats and wheat, contain lots of too, an abundance of, an exorbitant level of. So grains, no, off the table. Phytates, I just mentioned, they lead to nutrient deficiencies because they tend to bind to iron and zinc, but particularly the iron and zinc found in plants, not the iron and zinc found in meat, because for example, the iron found in meat is heme iron. Heme iron is non-toxic. Elemental iron is what you'll find in plants, and that is toxic if you get enough of it. But this is completely neglecting to mention the entire reason he's promoting alkalinity in terms of diet and alkaline foods. This is based on a fallacy. This is a fallacious myth that the cause of disease is acidity in the body, and the more acidity you have, the commensurate rise in disease, or at least the rise in the propensity for you to develop a disease, there will be within you, which is completely false. Let me put it to you this way, very quickly and very succinctly and concisely. There are only four factors that change the pH of an aqueous solution, such as your blood. Those are carbon dioxide concentration within the solution. The more carbon dioxide is present within the solution, the more acidic the solution becomes. The temperature of the solution. The colder the solution is, the more alkaline it becomes, the warmer it is or the hotter it is, the more acidic it becomes. ATOT concentration, which is the effective concentration of all weakly dissociated acid anions within your body, which is just a fancy amalgam term of proteins in your blood, whether it be free proteins like albumin or whether it be the protein transporters on the outsides of your cell membranes. And fourth are ions, four in particular, those being potassium, sodium, chloride, and lactate. The first three one consumes. However, those will not have a meaningful impact on your blood pH for more than half a second, really, because if you didn't know, every single time your heart pumps blood, roughly 25% of that blood is filtered through the kidneys. The kidneys filtering ions in and out of your blood to maintain the pH of one's blood. The pH of one's blood is maintained tightly at 7.35 to 7.45 pH always, unless you are critically ill. For example, have critical kidney damage. The lowest your blood pH can go in natural circumstances is 6.8 pH after laborious, onerous, strenuous, volitional exercise to exhaustion. And that only lasts for a very short amount of time because this is due to the buildup of lactate. And if your heart is pumping very hard and very fast, your kidneys will filter that lactate out even faster than it would if it weren't in that state. This is false. Anyway, just needed to clear that up. Best thing for iron, Jamaican source. Iron, I already covered that. The iron found in plants is elemental iron, which is toxic in high amounts. Do I even need to get into why iron is toxic in high amounts? Heme iron found in red meat is non-toxic. Red meat, red ruminant meat rather, being the most indicated food for human beings and what should make up 90% of a human being's diet. The associated fat alongside it as well.
If you're in this space, you're almost definitely aware of all of the comments that are made about the toxins in bottled water and especially tap water, so I'll save you the time on that. What almost always goes unappreciated, however, is the fact that you only absorb 15% of all water, no matter what kind it is, bottled, filtered, or tap. There is a way to fix this, however, and it's with a particular machine that makes water molecules that are much smaller than regular water molecules, so small, in fact, that it makes tea on impact with a tea bag without the need for boiling that water. This makes makes it 600% more hydrating than regular water, which of course will help with many health conditions, as it hydrates your cells more efficiently and more effectively than any other water that you can find. If you want to know more about this machine, like where to buy it, how it works, and also how it can replace your dish soap and sanitizer by emulsifying and mixing with oil, refer to the links in the description below. Brother Root, sweet tea, elderberry tea. Sweet tea, oxalate, galore. Oxalic acid galore, really, because oxalic acid is the plant toxin contained within things, especially like spinach and turmeric, but especially tea as well, that will bind to minerals inside your body, particularly magnesium, calcium, and zinc, and will form oxalates, which then crystallize to form raphides, which are smaller than your cell membranes. The picture will be up on the screen now. And therefore, upon impact with cell membranes, will destroy them and obliterate them to pieces. And if you didn't know, 80% of all kidney stones are calcium oxalate crystals. Oxalates are pretty much the underpinning cause of kidney stones. So no, don't drink tea. Your tea. Make sure you get your seeded watermelon, your seeded grapes. And your no, in fact, the seeds are actually where most of the plant toxins are contained within plants because it's the way that the plant protects its babies from being harmed. Plants are living things and we forget that they're living things. They have a way of survival like us. They have survival mechanisms, but since they're rooted to the ground and cannot move from where they are and they don't have eyes and a mouth, they have to produce another method or utilize another method to discourage predators from eating them. And they, therefore, are biochemical machines. They create the most sophisticated biochemical weapons really that any other organism can ever make. Fruit included, by the way, just a lower amount because the plant wants animals to eat the fruit, but not all animals. That's the key. Only some animals, which is why fruit still contains toxins to a certain degree, like kiwis and pineapple. Why do you think pineapple burns when you eat it? It's not because of the acid. It's because of the oxalates. Instead of regular lumps, you can use chickpeas, walnuts, and mushrooms as meat substitutes. Nope. Salicylates, saponins, lectins, oxalates. Nope. The recipes on YouTube. Stay away from shiitake mushroom, though. Okay, pseudo sophistication to make yourself look more credible than you actually are, to aggrandize yourself. It's all meretricious nonsense. Vegetables, red onions, okra, watercress, oils to cook with. I'll nope, you don't want to cook with oil. Oil is absolutely contraindicated in the human diet. Not one drop of oil should ever pass your lips, ever. Even if it is olive oil, even if it's coconut oil, coconut oil being the safest and most benign and innocuous. Aldehydes galore, also polyunsaturated fatty acids, which causally lead to inflammation, thromboxane production, vasoconstriction. I can go on and on about that. Oil, grapeseed oil, and grapeseed oils omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is close to 600 to 1 to 800 to 1. So absolutely not, because omega-6 oils, primarily linoleic acid, goes through a conversion process converting into arachidonic acid, reacts with the cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes within the body, and produces what I just said, thromboxanes, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and lipoxins. The first three lead to inflammation. And vasoconstriction, increased propensity for the blood to clot, yada yada yada. We're done here. Oil. Seasonings, you can use bay leaf, oregano. Seasonings are relatively benign and innocuous as well, but also are still plants and still do cause people issues as a result, especially black pepper. Parsley. Oh, and especially, especially hot pepper seasonings like cayenne pepper. So. Powder. Somebody comment free game if you want me to make part two of this video, I can keep going. No, we do not want you to make videos. The sensible people would like you to stop making videos. In fact, let me just check your page here. Let me see if you still post on here. Well, it looks like on your main page, you have posted last on December 5th, 2023, and I'd like to keep it that way. But anyway, that was it. Just completely ridiculous nonsense. It is my job to come on here every week and dispel with these myths. Three videos a week I react to, trying to provide a service to the population and to the world. So if you'd like to help me and like to donate, first and foremost, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, comment your thoughts below, and then please subscribe to the Patreon. There is a $1 a month tier that I may raise to a $2 a month tier, but still, that's still pretty low, I like to think. $5 a month and $8 a month. You get three uploads, instead of two uploads per week, one week early, ad-free, uncensored, and unblurred in terms of the pop-ups that come up on the screen, any references or citations for the erudite amongst us, as well as depending on the cut and how much assiduity I would like to employ on my videos, extended cut content. That's not going to be an every week thing. That's something that I do if I have enough time. And like I said, if I want to employ that much assiduity in my videos and that much zeal and effort, because it is very laborious and very strenuous. So buy my book as well, contraindicated when it is out currently, 
currently it is not out. We're aiming for March 1st of 2024 for that to be out. A closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century by the physical copy, either hardcover or paperback, or by the audiobook, which I have recorded myself. Also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of those will be linked below in the description. Email me any questions that you have, or if you'd like me to react to any videos in particular, I will try and get to those as fast as possible as well. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time when we decide to react to someone else that does not know what they're talking about at all in terms of human nutrition science, human physiology and biochemistry, even some anatomy and physics here and there, anthropology, etc, etc. So with that being said, I will see you then.